Let's talk about what it means to be an existential threat. The Jews have one reality, which is the one reality they can never escape from, which is their small people. The big moment for me uh, in really understanding that, when, uh, when I visited Villa Vanze, Villa Vanze is the gorgeous villa on the outskirts of Berlin next to a peaceful lake where the final solution was discussed and essentially finalized. Um, and I found that even though I visited Auschwitz uh, later, visiting Villa Vanze was much more shocking to me and harrowing than visiting Auschwitz. Because Villa Vanze is so beautiful and peaceful, and the lake is lovely. And to imagine that people gathered, educated people, gathered there around a table and thought through the final solution. Now, why could they imagine a final solution to the Jewish question, which is what it was called? There's a chart that you can purchase there, which basically has uh, the Nazis listing the number of Jews in every ter territory that they occupied and every territory that they still plan to occupy. So they list the number of Jews in Britain or in Ireland. And it says, okay, so many Jews in Poland, so many Jews in Bel It goes, and then there's a line, the way you do summation, and underneath it says 11 million. So they looked at the total number of Jews across the lands that they occupied or were planning to occupy, and they thought to themselves, 11 million, that's doable. Like, we can imagine with our technology, with our industry, a final solution to the Jewish question. In the same way, there is no understanding the conflict without understanding that the Jews are a puny minority in an overwhelming Arab and Islamic Middle East, which again is one of the other major reasons why they never see a reason to compromise with the Jews, you know. Why should they compromise with a yeah. tiny minority? So we are surrounded by ideologies, countries, people still largely very hostile to our very existence as an equal sovereign people. And this means that they can imagine our annihilation as something very practical. When I would visit various European capitals, meet with government officials who are funding UNRWA, and I would, I would tell them, you know, that the Arabs are very serious about the idea of return, and again, that it's not an innocent idea. And they would tell me, oh, no, you know, that's not serious. They know that they're not returning. They understand that Israel's here to stay. And I'm like, look, if anyone is irrational in this conflict, it's not them. They're looking at 7 million Jews struggling to survive amidst half a billion Arabs nearly 2 billion Muslims, again, still largely hostile to the existence of a Jewish state, and they not irrationally conclude that this experiment in Zionist, uh, you know, Jewish self-determination is not going to last long. So this is why Sinwar can imagine himself the new Salah Hadin, the one who is on the verge of bringing the annihilation of the Jewish state. So yes, it's very, very much existential, and anyone who's trying to downplay it, to claim that it's not true, is literally not opening a map.